A lot of people ask me online, is statistics necessary in case I want to work as a data analyst? And what about a data scientist type of role? And because I know there is a lot of confusion online, uh, in this video, my goal is exactly to bring you clarity on the field of statistics, how that is showing up in the workplace in case you want to go for a data analyst or data scientist type of role. I want to cover exactly the concepts that I think you should be confident with. And not only that, I will show you from a practical perspective how to implement those theoretical concepts in uh, real data scenarios. So if any of this sounds interesting, if you're also confused about the field of statistics in regards to data analytics, then make sure to stick with me in this video. So the first question that I wanted to answer is, is statistics necessary uh, if I want to work uh, in uh, data analytics? The simple answer, unfortunately, I cannot tell you a strict yes or no, because the answer really depends on the type of role that you're going for. For a generalist data analyst, I would say that statistics is not really really a strict requirement. I would treat it more like Python is a tool that is a nice to have, but not really necessary for the role. And in my seven years of experience as a data analytics lead, what happened to me in the workplace is that whenever I had to apply some statistical concepts and knowledge, I was basically learning on the job. And so the short answer for you is that I wouldn't be too much worried about statistics. Obviously, as I said, it's a nice to have in your curriculum, but it's something that I would take care of only uh, if you have already the really strong foundation level on other skill set. That being said, I also have to clarify that there are some roles in data analytics that are using statistics quite a lot. And that is happening, for example, for a product analyst type of roles. And these are people who are focusing more on the analytics on different product features. And it happens a lot that they will need to use hypothesis testing, A-B testing, and other statistical concepts which become fundamental for the role. And this is pretty much the same for data scientist type of roles, which are way more involved with uh, uh, mathematical and statistical concepts overall. And so hopefully this is a good introduction to make sure that you understand if you should focus on statistics or not as part of your career journey, because depending on where you're going in your career, then statistics might be necessary or not. And so with this intro out of the way, now let's actually use Excel, which is a tool that we are probably all familiar with, to cover the main statistical concepts that I think you should need in your career, but potentially also to prepare for job interviews. I'm going to cover the theoretical aspect and then we're going to also cover in practical terms how to apply these concepts in Excel. And obviously, if you want me to cover these concepts in tools like SQL and Python, uh, make sure to uh, drop a comment. So that could be another video that I can make for you. And also, let me tell you here that in case you're interested in uh, me supporting you to land a job offer in data analytics all the way until you actually land a job offer, then make sure to check my new Analytics and Automation Academy. The link is in the video description and applications are now open. So without further further ado, let's go into our Excel spreadsheet. Okay, so this is the uh, Excel file that I'm going to use throughout this video, just to show you in practical terms uh, the statistical concepts that we're going to cover in this video. But before jumping into this file, I want to uh, tell you more about the theoretical aspect of the first statistical concept that I think you should definitely be familiar with when uh, working with data. And the first concept that I want to cover is uh, what is called central tendency. So in simple terms, um, central tendency is a single value that attempts to uh, describe a set of uh, data by identifying the central or typical position within that set. And so basically with central tendency metrics, we are trying to answer the question, what is a typical value in the data set? There are three actual main measures of uh, central tendency. The first one is the mean, which is also called the average. We're going to see the formula in just a second, but it's basically the sum of all the values divided by the number of the values. Then the second one is the median, which is the middle value when all values are sorted in order. And then there is the mode, which is the value that appears most frequently. And let me try to convince you why these uh, metrics of central tendency are actually super, super important. So the first reason why we use these metrics and these statistical concepts in data analytics is that we uh, use measure of central tendency to summarize our data. So you can think that you cannot really look at thousands of rows of data and make sense of it quickly. A measure of central tendency gives you a simple one number summary of the entire data set. The other reason why measure of central tendency are super important is that it gives you uh, a big help and support in terms of comparison. So you can easily compare two or more different data sets by comparing, for example, the averages. 
maybe you will have that the mean customer satisfaction score for product A is 8.2, and then maybe for product B is uh, 6.5, and so you can compare the two. And the other aspect is that it uh, definitely helps to inform a business decision because a lot of businesses track uh, KPIs, which stands for Key uh, Performance Indicator. And these KPIs often are things like the average sales per day or maybe the average customer wait time or average uh, website session duration. Now, when we look at measures of uh, central tendency, I showed you that there are three different uh, metrics that we can track. And actually what makes a data professional, let's say, more experienced is actually the ability of choosing which of the three should be actually used. And to explain this concept, I can give you a very practical example that you see here. So, so let's consider a whole company example here. And let's say that the CEO says that the average or the mean salary in that company is $128,000 which uh, in most cases will sound uh, fantastic, but this is actually misleading. Why? Because the mean is heavily skewed by one extreme value, which in this case is the CEO own salary of $450,000. So what does it mean? This means that in this case, if you want to have a measure of central tendency of the salary in this company, a data analyst will look at this and say, okay, the median salary is actually $50,000 which is a much more accurate representation of what a typical employee earns. Why? Because as we've seen here, the mean is being distorted by an outlier. Now, if I want to show you this uh, concept in uh, uh, kind of a visual format, so what we have in here is actually the situation that I just explained. So in, let's say, the uh, best case scenarios, we have a symmetrical distribution where you can see in this line blue, we have most values in our data set falling here. And so the median, uh, mean and mode are actually the same value. But uh, there are a lot of circumstances where our data set doesn't have a symmetrical distribution, but we can have a positive skew or a negative skew. So in the uh, scenario that I explained to you about the salary of a company, we actually have most salaries falling here, which is actually the mode. But actually we have all of these people here that are earning way more compared to the typical uh, employee in the company. And so because we have all of these uh, outliers here, and probably the CEO would fall in here, then what it means is that the mean is moved towards the right, which also means that uh, if we want a proper measure of central tendency, because there is a positive skew, the mean will not be an uh, accurate value. And that is why we would prefer using the median instead. And uh, pretty much exactly the same concept apply for the negative skew, but in this case, the mean is uh, pushed towards the left. And here I want to mention that the beauty of working with uh, data analytics tools, even if it's a simple one like Excel, is that as long as you understand the theoretical aspect of the statistical concept, you actually don't have to worry too much about formulas. And I'm saying this because a lot of people look at statistics and look at mathematics and they're like, oh God, I need to, you know, memorize some formulas. Uh, these formulas looks quite complicated. And so I can understand why, uh, you know, uh, these kind of fields might look a bit overwhelming or a bit more uh, complex uh, compared to what they actually are. And so what you have to have in your mind is that actually uh, by using these uh, data analytics tools, you don't have to memorize uh, formulas at all because these formulas and functions are already built in in these tools. This concept applies to Excel, but also SQL, Tableau, Python, Power BI, and all the other data analytics tools. And you might be familiar with this, but um, I have here a table with a lot of uh, orders. So uh, we're talking about like sales data. And then in here, I want to basically create a bit of a summary for uh, this table here, this uh, data set that I have in here. And uh, so I have here, I want to calculate the mean, the median, and the mode. And so what I would do here, instead of uh, writing the full uh, formula myself, I would just have equal, and then I would do average. And for the unit price, the average unit price, I just need to select the whole range here, close the brackets, enter, and this is my average uh, unit price for all of these orders. If I want to calculate the median, is pretty much the same concept. So I'm going to do equal, and then median. I'm going to select median, and then the range will be the same. So I'm going to close the brackets here. This is the median of uh, the unit price. You can immediately see how the median and the um, average are completely different. Why? Because probably they have a massive spread of values. So uh, as you can see here, I have values like 
4,000 here, and then we start at even like 20, uh, 30, so massive range here. And that is why the mean and median are uh, pretty different. And same for the mode, I can do equal and then mode single. And then I'm going to select again the unit price, close brackets, and then enter. Why I get these uh, one, two, three? Because probably here, uh, let me check the data set, we have this appearance of the unit price. So one, two, three, and uh, one, two, three as well. One, two, three as well in here. So $123 is the uh, value with the most uh, uh, frequency over these uh, unit prices. Now, connected to the uh, measure of central tendency, I uh, also want to uh, talk to you about a new statistical concept and term that I think you should uh, know, definitely. And uh, the term that I want to explain to you now is uh, called uh, range. So a range is actually something that I already mentioned to you just now, and is uh, simply the difference between the highest and the lowest value in a data set. And it's probably the uh, easiest uh, measure of uh, variability that you can calculate in a, a specific data set. And so when did I mention this uh, range concept just now? Well, I actually uh, described to you uh, why I can see that there is a massive difference between mean and median. And that is because uh, I assume that there is a massive uh, range and spread within this uh, unit price um, column. So how do I actually double check this uh, instead of like assuming or manually checking? Well, I can do another formula in Excel, which is uh, the max. So I'm basically getting the maximum and highest value of this column here. So as I was saying before, I have uh, 4,444, um, which is the highest value. Then I can also get the minimum. So let me put the minimum in here. So unit price, this will be the minimum. And so as I was saying before, we have a huge variability in the unit price. And this variability, I can actually measure it. And uh, that is exactly what is the range. And so if I can write here the range, the range is uh, precisely equal to the maximum value uh, of this column, which is uh, 4,444, minus the minimum value. Then I press Enter, and this is exactly our range. And let me clarify that the uh, range is actually a uh, super important concept in uh, statistics. So we have just seen the measures of uh, central tendency, which are uh, the mean, the median, and the mode. And now the range that I just showed you is actually uh, one of the measures of dispersion, which are uh, statistical tools that are used to describe the spread of variability of data around a central value. And the central value can be considered one of those uh, measures of central tendency that I just showed you. Now, the next concept that I want to cover about statistics and also, uh, again, regarding measure of dispersion is what we call variance. Now, in simple terms, uh, variance is a numerical value that tells you how spread out or dispersed uh, a, all the data points in our data set are around their mean or average. A low variance means that uh, data points are clustered closely uh, around the, uh, the mean and the average. So that is exactly what you see here on the right hand side, where all data points are around the green dot, which is the mean. Whereas high variance is what you see on the left, where we still have the mean here, the green dot. And you can see that all the other data points are not uh, really all uh, condensed into the mean, but are pretty much dispersed everywhere. Now, as I was saying before, um, if I show you the formula of the variance, uh, you might get a bit overwhelmed because there's a lot of uh, symbols and, and stuff going on in here. But uh, simply put, this is the symbol that we use to uh, represent variance. And then this whole numerator here simply means that we calculate the difference between um, each of the data points, which are all the dots that I showed you just in the picture just now, compared to the mean, which has this uh, symbol here. With the sum symbol, uh, which simply means that we calculate this difference for all the data points in our data set. And by the way, for each uh, differences that we calculate for all the data points, we actually calculate the square deviation. And then all of the final result here is divided by the uh, population size. And so if I go back to our Excel file, I'm in a new tab. And in this case, I want to calculate the variance for uh, the uh, actual the total amount. And so again, I don't have to really memorize the, the formula by heart just because Excel gives me already the uh, formula itself. And so I'm going to do equal. I'm going to type variance 
and I'm going to select the uh, this one here. And then I will need to just uh, select the range. I'm going to do a close brackets and then enter. And this value here indicates that the total amount that we have in this column is uh, pretty uh, scattered from the mean. And uh, to better understand this concept, I can do the uh, amount actually, amount diversity. And so I'm going to do equal, and then I'm going to calculate the max of the total amount here that we get for our sales, which is uh, 6,000, minus the mean of, again, open brackets, and then I'm going to select the total amount here. And this is actually the, the range that we defined before. So a pretty uh, high range uh, for our total amount. And so I'm going to write average here and then select the total amount and then close brackets and then enter. And this is our average. And then another super important concept to know uh, within the measures of uh, dispersion is uh, what is called standard deviation. And actually, the standard deviation is simply a square root of the variance. And uh, the point here is that while variance tell you how spread out the data is in square units, standard deviation brings it back to the original unit of the data, which makes it easier to understand and explain. Obviously, the key point here is the same. So low standard deviation means that data points are close to the mean, and so there is more consistency, whereas High standard deviation, uh, it means that points are spread out uh, very far from the mean, and so there is more variation. This is, again, uh, probably easier to understand with a visual. So here we have uh, job satisfaction ratings. So, you know, we have a rating from uh, 0 to 100 about working in a specific company. And then in this axis here, we have, you know, how many employees we have for each of the ratings. And so a standard deviation of 5, which means it's a pretty low number, and so it means that pretty much all values are very close to the mean. This is the actual uh, blue line that you see here. And as you can see, we have the mean for uh, 50. And, uh, you know, most of the people are in here, which means are very close to the mean. And so there is a very low range, and uh, pretty much all data points are, um, you know, very close to the mean. On the opposite side, we have a higher standard deviation of 20, which is the green line that you see here. So again, if the average is 50, you can see that the employees are spread from the minimum value 0 all the way to 100. We still have the majority around the mean, but uh, you know we have pretty much a very similar frequency of people that, for example, answered with the job satisfaction ratings of 25 and even 75 here. And so going back to our Excel, what I can do is calculate in the standard deviation here. I'm going to do equal, and then I'm going to uh, click on standard deviation P. I'm going to show you just in a second why I select P. And then again, I just have to um, select our range. We are calculating the total uh, amount standard deviation in here, and that is our final number. Last thing that I want to clarify, uh, in the variance, I selected S. This S stands for sample. What does it mean? If the table that I see here is not actually my, uh, let's say, full data available on others, but simply a sample of it, then I should select the uh, variance and then S in, uh, in the Excel formula. Whereas what I've done in the standard deviation is selecting P. And so you would select P if actually you know that this is all the data that you have for the, uh, in this case, for your orders. And so P stands for population. So again, you can either work with a sample of data, which is a subset of your data, or you can work with, uh, you know, the whole data set itself. So in this example, obviously, I can consider this a sample or population depending on my uh, assumption. But uh, hopefully this uh, makes it also clear on how to differentiate between the two formulas. And there you have it, a simple video about the main statistical concepts that I think you should be aware of. If you found at least one useful information in this video, make sure to like and subscribe to my channel so that I can help you even further in the next videos. And as I mentioned at the start, if you want me to help you to land a job in data analytics, make sure to check my Analytics and Automation Academy. It's a six-week program where we cover Excel, SQL, Tableau, Python, AI agents, and also domain knowledge. And I will help you all the way until you actually land a job 
job offer so make sure to check it in my uh, video description and in case you're interested to practice some data analytics task using uh, tools like sql and python make sure to check out these uh, videos that i'm gonna leave here and when enjoy the rest of your day ciao for now and see you in the next one